Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over some items and we're going to start with uh, this little plant stand that I'm going to turn into a riser uh, because I need a solid surface on this. It's a good size to use as a riser in some of my vignettes and I had this picture. I actually had a couple of these and I didn't really want to uh, make it over as a picture. Uh, some of you might uh, I might get fussed at for this, but I'm going to paint it, and I'm going to paint this um, whole thing in the color cotton white. So what I did was I glued it on with some E6000, and I took, uh, I put the E6000 uh, on all the surfaces there on the top, and then I glued it to, uh, I glued the little uh, picture to the top and then painted everything uh, with two coats of the color cotton. And because I didn't have really a good color to distress down to, then I'm just gonna use my stays on ink and just kind of rub it across some of the high spots to just do some fake distressing. And then I took this outside and sprayed it with a clear satin finish. Uh, that's just the finish that I wanted on this because I wanted it to be very wipeable. So I sealed the whole thing, the top, the legs, and all. Uh, and then I'm going to be adding just some small transfers to the top of this. I want to keep it uh, very simple because I want to be able to interchange it in different vignettes. But I want to add some of the blue that I'm going to be putting in this vignette. And I got some uh, transfers from my friend Frankie. And I'm not certain I'll be able to find these. I'm going to look them up. I think they are redesigned by Prima. And, um, but she just said she couldn't use them all. So she brought me some of them. I love these for this. I think they're perfect. And they're going to be just simple enough for this. And um, I even cut part of one of these and added to, to the other side of the top. And then obviously I'll have to go back over this again with another clear coat. So I just did one coat, one coat in the beginning and then um, it'll end up having two coats once I, once I put another coat on these um, transfers. But I think this gives it a, a simple look but a very French country look and uh, that's what I was going for with this one. Next I'm going to... Uh, I say make over this mirror, but it's going to be very simple. All I'm going to do is tone this way down. So I'm using some gilding wax. I'm using the color bronze. So um, I don't want to rub this on because uh, it w it's such a slick finish that it'll take a lot of it off. So I just kind of put a little bit on my fingertip and just kind of tap it on until I get the whole thing covered. And I feel like that toned it down a lot. Now, I may end up having to paint it later, but I, I kind of wanted that gold in that vignette. So, that's why I decided to just uh, try to work with that gold. Now, I'm making a second riser out of this stool. And this obviously could be used as a stool or as a riser itself also because it does have that solid finish. But uh, I'm putting some um, E6000 on this. And uh, I didn't even worry with taking that sticker off. I tried to get it off and probably could have heated it up and took it off, but I just didn't bother with it because I'm going to be gluing this over the top anyway. So I took this old plate and I didn't have any of the other pieces of this set. So I'm just using this as a riser and this will have a very French country look. So I just glued that on and let it dry overnight. And then uh, I made a mold to go around that because I felt like you could still see the top of that stool. So I wanted it to be a little bit dressier in order for it to go with the look. So I'm using, um, I, make, I made about three of these molds uh, from this trim mold set. And again, I'll try to link this in the description also. This one's given to me by my sister, but I had a viewer who found it online at one point. So I think I can find it. Um, but uh, I did three of these and glued them around the top of the stool. And then I painted uh, the stool and the, the trim in the color cotton also. 
And I like to glue these on with tight bond. I've, I have better luck with the tight bond than any other glue that I've tried to use. And I, I paint my molds while they're still wet because then you have much less cracking. Um, and then I painted the whole stool uh, the, on the sides, the bottom, the legs, the whole thing. And then once that dried well, then I went over it with a white wax because uh, any cracking that I might get in my trim and then also where my, my molds meet, uh, it fills that in and you don't notice, you don't notice it much. So uh, that's why I decided to use the white wax rather than just a clear finish on it. I actually have some viewer hang tags to show today, and I'll make a hang tag to go with my vignette, uh, but um, I'm excited to show those hang tags because I got some very pretty ones. So again, I'm gluing this on with tight bond, and then I'll paint the whole stool, obviously except the plate, in the color cotton two coats and uh, let that dry overnight and then I'm going to use a white wax on this and now this riser is uh, not like any that you've seen I like the look of it and it's going to go well in my vignette now the next item is this pitcher and although I'm not crazy about the yellow I'm going to make it work so I can easily add yellow to this blue and white vignette and it's a good color to accent with. So I'm gonna paint this two coats. Now I was gonna use the color cotton on this and, uh, but I was gonna use this slick stick first because I wanna make sure that it sticks well. And if you've not tried slick stick, that's a Dixie Belle product and uh, it just helps um, paint stick better to slick surfaces. So I always try to use it on any slick glass surface. Uh, but after I put this on, I just decided instead of painting it white, uh, instead of painting it cotton, this was close enough in color and I just went ahead and did two coats of the slick stick and that will act as my paint color. I just felt like it was a little bit redundant to do the white on top of this and and i'm going to be finishing this off with that clear satin finish anyway so uh, you can't tell that it's not painted when i'm finished and then i'll be sure that it sticks because two coats of this will uh, will be a really good solid finish so now i'm going to use a couple of the transfers from that same set and put one on the front and one on the back um, if you've not tried to put transfer on uh, a rounder surface like this, uh, then it's always a good idea to cut some slits around the outer edge of it. And that way you can just kind of uh, very carefully uh, put it on there and not worry about it wrinkling all up. So just lay it down well and just very carefully do one little section at a time and pull that up. I usually just pull that up and cut it off out of my way and then, uh, and then do the next section until I get the image on. And I did that on both the front and the back. And again, I'm gonna be leaving the inside yellow. That way uh, you can put water in it if you need to, but I'm gonna make a hang tag for this one. So I'm gonna keep it kind of simple. My plan was to use this napkin here and I decided against it and ended up using another one. Uh, but I'm just layering some plain book page on the top of a dark blue card stock. And then I'm just stamping both sides. And I've antiqued around the edges. I do like to do that and I like to tear my edges uh, most of the time. So I got an image from this napkin, just one layer of the napkin and put that on the top because I'm just needing to add some of that color and now I'm adding some texture with the laces and give it more of a French country look. And I've just tied some vintage lace around the top of it uh, to hang it with. And I, I always should just use a regular hole punch because I want to make sure that I have plenty of room for any fabrics that I used to tie it on with. And now I'm just gluing some buttons on and this little tag will be finished. And now I'm doing the uh, hang tag that I put on the first riser and I just used a little tag shape uh, that I had, I think somebody gave me some of these and I just antiqued around the edges 
and um, and now I am stamping one of the stamps from the set I See Paris. That's a redesign by Prima set. And I'm just stamping that on both sides of this. And I, I don't worry that it doesn't fit. I'm just kind of going for that look and keeping this one very simple. And then I just tie some lace on this one and this one is complete. Your hang tags don't have to be real real uh, detailed. Uh, sometimes you're just going for that look and just a simple hang tag will work just fine. But I love the colors in this one. Now I'm going to do a little um, a little jewelry box here. This is just a little wooden box and it has some uh, some sort of folk art painting on it. So I am going to paint this and I'm going to use, uh, I had a little bit of buttercream left in, uh, in a container and I added just a little bit of vintage duck egg, just, just a tiny bit because I just wanted this to be a very light blue and that's the color I'm going to be using. But I'm using some resin molds on this and I'm just kind of showing you, uh, my friend Myra told me about these and she sent me a bunch of them already made. And these are great to have made ahead that you can glue onto flat items. Now you can't do, glue it onto rounder items, but you can glue it on fl flat ones and you just mix the part A and part B together and then stir it up well and immediately pour it into your molds. Because you have to be careful doing this, especially on these small molds, but uh, it's going to set up in about 10 minutes. So uh, you don't have a whole lot of time. So you just have to get them poured and uh, just be careful. And if you, if you have any that comes off the top or that, that you pour over the top that doesn't stay in the mold well, if you catch it before it hardens too much, you can just take the scissors and cut that off. But now I'm giving this uh, one coat on this little box and it just took one coat to cover it well. And I'm not working around these hinges because I'm going to be adding some gilding wax. So I just painted right over the top of these and I painted the whole outside in this color. And again, this is mostly buttercream with just a touch of the vintage duck egg. So that's the color I used on the outside. And then on the inside, because I'm going to be doing some decoupage on it, I just painted it in the color cotton white. So now that this is dry, I'm just taking some tight bond and gluing my molds where I want them. And I just glued some of these on and this is just some little birds and some leaves and um, flowers. And I'm just kind of placing a few of those on here. And then, uh, and then once that dries, then I paint over the top of that with this same blue that I mixed. So again, I painted the inside of the box in the color cotton, and then I'm going to be decoupaging a napkin that I got last fall at Target uh, because it has just enough gold in it to, um, to kind of accent the gold on the outside. So that's what I decoupaged on the inside of this box. And then I didn't worry about the edges being very neat because I'm going to go over this with some sandpaper and just neaten up those edges and do a little bit of distressing on the outside of the back box also. And the main reason for that is because um, this is kind of a cheaper box and it had seemed like sharper edges than I wanted it to have. So I wanted those to be kind of smoothed down some. Um, I, the distressing wouldn't really show because I'm going to be adding that gilding wax, but again, I just wanted it to be a little bit smoother. And I feel like the best tool for adding gilding wax, for me anyway, is just your fingertip. And although this is a little harder to wash off than regular paint, it does come off with just soap and water. So um, I, I just feel like it works better to have your fingers for this. So I just keep adding until I feel like um, I have enough of this and then um, add some of the gold gilding wax. This is bronze gilding wax. And then uh, once I get enough of this on so that I have that deeper color behind it, then I'm going to add some gold gilding wax and um, just kind of highlight all those areas. And then I want to give this a different look. So um, in order to make it look uh, 
a little bit more expensive rather than such a cheap little box. I felt like it needed some feet. So I just used some large wooden beads and I am um, painting them with the gilding wax. And I'm just using my fingers for that and putting it on a skewer and, and just painting it. And then I'm taking some wood glue. I'm using tight bond wood glue and a little bit of hot glue and gluing those on. And as most of you know, the hot glue is just to give it a, a an immediate hold and the tight bond is to give it a permanent hold. And then obviously this is gonna need to dry overnight for the for that permanent hold. An easier option for this would have just been to paint the inside of it solid gold, but I kind of like that decoupage paper. Now it's time for my hang tags. And this one, now this first hang tag comes from Jerry from North Carolina. And I don't want to say her last name because she didn't say that was okay. But I love this one. I think it has a really pretty country retro look to it. And I love the scripture on it. Uh, I think this one is just so pretty. It kind of has more of a primitive look, which I really like. And these next two came from Sharon Nixon from Virginia. And uh, she used some very uh, nice techniques. I love her shabby roses with the pearls in them. And I love this friend definition. She used cloth and some sheer cloth on the back with some print showing through. This one is just absolutely, or both of these are. I love the ear bob that she used on the top of this one. Uh, as an embellishment and here's some more of that sheer fabric over a printed fabric this is just gorgeous she used some really neat te techniques on these and then the last one is from kathy farmer from alabama and i love this one also again she used scripture on this and and those shabby roses and some decoupage from napkins. This one is absolutely beautiful as well. I, you guys are just really impressing me with these gorgeous hang tags because y'all have done such a wonderful job and I never expected the kind of talent that has came from these. I'm also very grateful for all of your uh, participation in this. It's, it's been so fun for me and um, it wouldn't be if you guys didn't participate and I thank you guys so much for that and also for all the sweet little gifts that y'all are sending along with those. Um, some of these ladies today sent me some craft supplies, so um, I'm just so grateful. I love all of you so much and I'm so grateful to have you as part of my channel. And for those of you who haven't checked out my friend's channel, uh, it is Farm Fresh Designs 59, and she has a one, some wonderful gift ideas uh, to take to the nursing home. And they're so simple to make, but they're so cute. So if you haven't checked that last video out, you might want to go over and check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.